So this, my friends, this is amazing. Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. I am so excited today because I will be reviewing some items while at the same time what I'm really excited about is what this means in the industry of astrophotography and how in the long term it can help us amateur astrophotographers, at least from my point of view. So I'll get more into that in the video. So what are we looking at today? We're looking at a new off-axis guider, an OAG by Tobtech, which is the brand that makes the cameras that I use, uh, for instance. And also we'll be looking at a brand new filter drawer by the same Tobtech brand. All of those work together beautifully and work together with the Tobtech cameras or even ZW cameras or QHY cameras as well, beautifully. And this is a spoiler alert, but I'm particularly excited about those two things because they are budget alternatives to the uh, OAGs and filter wheels provided by uh, firms like ZW. In, in my opinion, both the OAG and the filter drawer here are superior to the ones that are offered by ZW. So what is the big deal with those two things? So first, let's look at the OAG. I already have a, a camera in there, a guide camera. It's the, uh, the Tobtech camera with the 290 sensor in it. And you can see the prism is here uh, available. So what's happening is that uh, if you're not familiar with an OEG, it's something that you mount on your telescope. There's this uh, little prism here that will reflect light and point it towards a guide camera. So you do not need a separate guide scope and camera like this. Uh, you just replace it by uh, this system here and it solves a lot of issues with astrophotography like flexture, it can also allow for more precise guiding, but it also has its drawbacks. I've covered those in a previous video. I'll put the link above if you're interested. What is so special about this compared to the ZW OAG? Well, it is mainly the prism size. This prism here is 10 millimeters size, which is absolutely huge. Whereas something like the ZW OAG is only eight millimeters roughly. It shows really well when you look inside the stock and you can see how massive that opening is for the prism and for the image that will be reflected on the prism towards the guide camera. And I love to see that, but this is not all. It's also well designed. So I'll go into how I will connect it to my Tech camera in a moment, but suffice it to say, you can connect it using screws rather than just threads as you would normally. So there's no rotation involved. You can also rotate the uh, the whole assembly as required and it stays very thin at the same time. So the set of the filter wheel plus the OAG gives you your 55 millimeters of back focus distance with any camera that has 17.5 millimeter of back focus like the Tech cameras or like most ZW cameras. And if you don't want to use a filter wheel, the OAG also comes with this adapter that performs the exact same function. You can screw in a filter inside. It's just that if you want to change the filter, you'll need to remove that first and then change the filter. So it's not as convenient. But this is included with the OAG and the filter wheel is sold separately, but I'll go to the filter wheel in a moment. So let's look at the OAG itself and how it can be assembled. So one of the first things that we can see is that the stock here can be moved freely until you do something specific, which is add this mountain plate on top, which for me is an M48 adapter, and this will be the telescope side. Once you add it, you'll be able to tighten the uh, prism in place using this worm screw here. So it's actually super well designed to be able to freely change the distance here while you are looking at the camera sensor. That's actually a huge advantage. So let's uh, mount this together. All of the screws, the hex keys, and everything is included in the OAG. So everything that you need is included. And if your camera doesn't have those screw holes like those here, which, you know, the ZW cameras of APS-C and full frame um, do have that, so you can use them as is, but you can still use the adapter that comes with the OAG and threads to mount your threaded camera on it without issue. But since I can use a screwed connection, which provides a much more stable way to connect the OAG, that's what I'll be using this time. So first things first, I would normally be connecting the adapter or I can be connecting the filter wheel. And this is what I'm going to be doing. And at the same time, I'll be able to talk about that mystery filter wheel that for me works so well. This is magnetic, of course, you can change the filter holder and its budget, I'll go into the prices in a moment, so stay tuned. The first action is using the provided screws. 
and the provided screwdriver. The screwdriver comes with the uh, filter wheel. Otherwise, you can use uh, screws with the uh, hex, hex wrench that comes with the OAG. But you want to affix it to the screw holes of your camera. And I have a couple of short screws here for the side that will uh, have the filter drawer. And then I have longer screws available for the rest. And now that I have the filter wheel uh, affixed, and I could have like the uh, the simple adapter instead, the one that comes with the OAG. So it's up to you whether you buy the uh, the filter wheel. This is super solidly connected to the camera. I can go with the OAG, and of course I can place it perfectly so that it will be on the long side of the sensor, right? So I I do not um, mess up with the uh, the actual. Uh, main imaging sensor as much as possible. So it's extremely easy to line it up like that in the perfect configuration without having to worry about rotation. And I absolutely love this. This is one of the main drawbacks of the ZWOAG beyond the uh, small prism size. This is probably the most, most intensive step because you need to make sure that you do not uh, let those screws drop onto your sensor. So be very careful. In all of those operations, by the way, you do want to make sure that you don't tighten the screws uh, like one after another. You want to tighten them finger tight at first and then uh, slowly uh, tighten them more one by one uh, in, in a sequence so that you don't have tilt introduced by this. So this is what uh, I'll be doing. And I should have done that as well with the filter. I didn't really do it but I'll uh, redo it after the video. And I can add the filter drawer. Mm, I like the magnets. And now we have basically the OAG available. So my next step would be to choose where to put the prism in relationship with the sensor. We want to make sure that the prism is as low as possible so it gets good star shapes, or to some extent good star shapes. Don't be surprised if they look like comets. It's fine, your guiding system will be okay. And uh, But we want to make sure that we don't cover the sensor or introduce artifacts uh, like star spikes on the sensor due to the presence of this in the light path. Something like this for me is probably a good compromise. I can always change it later very easily, but it's just my starting point. Then I can add the final adapter. For me, it's an M48 to connect to my telescope. And now I can uh, tighten the screws like small amounts one by one to make sure that we don't introduce any tilt. And then if I'm satisfied with the position of my prism, which I am right now, I can just tighten a little bit the uh, screw in the center. And we are ready. We have a super nice and tight connection with the camera. And I find this absolutely amazing. This is so good. So now let's talk a bit more about the filter drawer itself. I mean, it's a filter drawer, right? So it has the super cool option to be screwed onto the camera, which I find is a super good advantage. And what I really love about it is that you have uh, magnets that are strong enough. This is the one thing that I don't like about the ZW uh, filter drawer. It is the magnets are a bit too weak. And sometimes, actually twice, I've actually had my filter and the drawer just like fall off the ZW filter wheel because of the weakness of the magnets. This, these magnets are strong and they're much better feeling. And I really like that. So in the end, you get a really solid, really beefy uh, filter wheel. And I haven't mentioned the best filter of that OEG up to now, which has been very obvious if you've been watching the video. It is the helical focuser there. So I can achieve very fine focus with the guide camera. And then I can just slide my guide camera inside and perform the focus. So how much does all of this uh, cost? So the OEG itself is currently on sale at 144 US dollars which makes it really a budget OAG that you can put next to the ZW OAG, except that I feel, uh, that's my personal opinion, of course, but it is superior in all respects to the ZW OAG, which I really like, by the way. I bought it and, and I'm using on my Newtonian telescope. It's just, this is better for roughly the same price. So, yeah. And same, the filter wheel is 69 US dollars and there is apparently a Christmas promotion or whatever. Uh, and 
Again, it's the same range of prices, actually a bit cheaper, and it's better than what is available on the ZW side of things. And if you want additional filter drawers, TopeTech provides them, I believe, for 20 US dollars each, which again is cheaper than ZW. Now, I've already tested the OAG uh, when I was imaging last night the Pleiades, and the guiding worked beautifully despite the stars looking a bit like comets. I was using it on this telescope, my Ascar V, to the final installation. You can simply screw the uh, OEG into it. For me, it's M48 threads. But I think it's obvious now why I am so excited. It's because we see more competition on the market. I am so hyped to see Taupe Tech, which two years ago, I introduced the Rising Cam uh, camera with the IMX571 sensor. That camera was actually made by Taupe Tech, or so I understand it. But it was like kind of a, a dodgy solution because you could only get it on AliExpress from China, etc. And now you have a proper Taupe Tech website when you can buy, where you can buy those cameras. You also have like uh, US-based resellers like Ogma that can provide on-site uh, support or local support in the country. So it's much more established and now they're going the same path that ZW did in the past. They're adding accessories for astrophotography. This OAG, which is excellent, and this filter wheel, which is also excellent. I mean, this is super cool. More competition is always awesome for the hobby. So this, my friends, this is amazing. And I can't wait to see what's going to come next. Which areas are they going to enter? Oh, actually, uh, did I forget to mention they also have a filter wheel available, an electronic filter wheel for around, I think, 220 something dollars. So again, competitive with what is currently available on the market. Oh man, oh man, I am so excited because this is good. More choice for us amateur astrophotographers is always better, especially at a reasonable price like that. And from what I can tell in high quality. So if you're interested in the top tech equipment, whether it's cameras, OEG, filter wheel, uh, filter drawer, etc., check the links down in the description, like the video and subscribe so that we can get the word spread more that there are alternatives on the market now. We are getting more competition and this will force competitors to react and to compete. And if you want to support the channel and make the channel possible by letting me buy stuff like this that I used for the overhead kind of view when installing the OAG, you can buy from my affiliate links down in the description at no cost to you. You can join my Patreon as a member and some ranks have access to my videos without as and in advance. Or you can also join my channel as a YouTube member. Just click on the uh, button below the video. But don't worry about any of that because every bit helps just watching the videos, commenting, liking, talking about them helps a huge amount. And I hope that as always, those videos have been useful to you guys. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.